Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to define a model in RAM concept. In this video, we are going to be focusing on modeling your structure geometry. In RAM concept, you can create single story models and define columns and walls above and below the slab. Supports above the slab do not provide vertical support, only horizontal support and bending resistance. To begin your modeling process, you're first going to want to navigate to the correct layer in RAM concept. In my layers menu bar, I'm now going to select my mesh input standard plan, which is where all of the structural objects that will be used to generate your finite element mesh will be located. Now for this particular model, I have imported a CAD background, which I will be using for additional snap locations. This will ensure accuracy of my model, and since I already have a CAD drawing, this should save me some time in my modeling steps. If you've already imported your CAD drawing, you can just turn it on on this layer by clicking on your visible objects icon. Once this is selected, we can go to our drawing input layer and say show all. This will turn on all the layers that are currently in our DWG file. Now you're going to notice that none of these objects are currently on this layer. We're just able to view them on the layer and we are able to snap to their intersection points. Now the first type of items I'm going to create in our RAM concept model is our support items. So I'm going to model my walls and columns below the slab. And if I want to model any of them above the slab, I can do that at this point too. Whenever we're creating any object in RAM concept, our first step is to define the properties. And then our second step would be to go ahead and model those items. To define the properties for any type of element, you're going to want to go down to your layer specific toolbar and double click on the tool that you want to activate. For this first step, we're going to select our model column icon. And we're going to double click on it, which will allow us to define our properties. The default column properties dialog will appear and we'll go ahead and select different items. We can enter our concrete mix information, the height of the column, which is your vertical distance from the centroid of the slab to the far end of the column. We're going to model this column below the slab and we're going to enter the width and depth of our column. You're going to notice that the units for each field are indicated at the right hand side. We can, in RAM concept, model either square, rectangular, or circular columns. And if you had a round column, you'd want to enter your diameter field and leave the width field set to zero. You can enter the angle or orientation of the element and also your bending stiffness factor. The bending stiffness factor can be used to modify the bending stiffness of a column without changing the geometry. And we're going to enter this at 0.7. Next, we have several check boxes. The first is the roller at far end. This will release the column at the far end in the X and Y axes. There will be no horizontal shear in the column. If you have columns above the slab, this should be checked or the columns will provide lateral resistance. Next, we have the fixed near and fixed far parameters. These will provide a moment connection between the column and the slab. If it is unselected, it will be modeled as a pinned connection. Finally, we have the compressible item. This will allow for the column to elongate vertically across according to Hooke's law. Compressible columns usually produce results that are more accurate, which is specifically important if you have columns close together or close to a wall. Once you've specified all of your default column properties, we can click OK. And then with a single click of this icon, or as you can see, the icon is still active, we can start modeling our columns. If we would like to use your CAD background or a grid, you can select from the different snap options that are appropriate. I'm going to use the snap to intersection option, and I'm going to model these at my grid intersections. Now, it may be useful to zoom in and out as required in order to make sure you're snapping at the correct location. To zoom in, I could just use my mouse wheel and scroll up, and then I can be sure that I select the grid intersection. If I want to move the view on my screen, I can just hold down my mouse wheel 
and scroll either left or right to reorient my view. To model each item, I'm doing just a single click of my left hand mouse. To zoom back out, I could either use my mouse wheel or I can reorient my zoom using one of my view tools. As we finish modeling our columns in RAM concept, let's talk about a few of the errors or warnings you may encounter when performing your calculation. It's important to note that two column elements below the slab cannot be located at the same location. If you have two columns at the same location, RAM concept will give you a warning during the calculation. In addition to that, if a column element is not attached to the slab, or basically if a column is outside your overall slab perimeter, you will get an error when the column to let you know that the column is not within the boundary. Now, if you do have a situation where you would like to model your columns below and above your slab, and they are at the same location, you could simply just copy the columns that you created below the slab, and then paste them on the same plan, and then modify their properties to say above the slab. The next type of support element we will define in RAM concept is our walls. Over in our layer specific tool, our first step is to define our wall properties. So we're going to find our wall icon and double click on it to define its properties. Here we can enter the concrete mix information, the height of the wall, the support step set, and the thickness of the wall. In addition to that, we have several checkboxes that will affect the behavior of the wall in the slab. The first item is the shear wall. This will lock the wall to the slab horizontally and thus restrain it. Otherwise, the slab can slide over the top of the wall, which is sometimes detailed in post-tensioning. Next, we have our fixed near and far parameters. This will provide a moment connection between the wall and slab about the wall's R axis. Otherwise, the wall will be considered pinned. Finally, we have our compressible checkbox. This will allow the wall to elongate in the Z direction according to Hooke's law. Otherwise, the wall will be considered incompressible. Now, as a quick tip, compressible walls are usually produce more res accurate results. Once you are done setting your wall parameters, we'll click OK. We are now ready to start modeling our walls. Before we do that, let's take a look at our wall icon, and we're going to notice a little black triangle in the lower right-hand corner. Whenever you see this on any of the icons, it means there are additional tools located beneath. So if we hold down our left mouse button, we'll see those additional tools. The traditional wall tool will select the starting and ending node of the wall when you model it, which will correspond to your center line of the wall. You are also able to model a wall along its left or right side, depending upon where you have your snap locations. This may make it a little bit easier. We're going to use our traditional wall tool, and we can see that this icon is already selected. It looks pushed in. If it doesn't, you could just give it a single, quick, single click, and then we can start modeling our walls. I'm going to zoom into the area, area that I want to model my walls by using my mouse wheel. And I'm going to click on one end of the wall, and then I'm going to click on the opposite. Now what you're going to notice is that I intersected my walls at their center lines. Intersecting walls require attention when modeling. As a rule, you should model intersecting walls with their center lines in intersecting as we did in this exercise. So you can see I ran this wall from the face of the column down to where its center line intersects the wall that forms that T intersection. This will yield more accurate results. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.